next to you. What I, say, what I was saying was is that once you become saved, you cannot become any more saved. Right. Once you repent and, and you're baptized, you are saved and that's it. There is no level to it. But the thing that you can do is you can become more and more effective in saving the lost. Right. And how do we do this? Well, I got three simple points for you guys today. Is Number one, see as Jesus see. Number two, believe as Jesus believed. And number three, love as Jesus loved. Point number one, see as Jesus see. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew chapter 9, verse 26. I mean, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, sorry. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 9, sorry. Chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. You guys are there saying, man? Yeah. It says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teachings in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without shepherds. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. You see, Jesus right here, he met a lot of people. And the thing is, he had compassion on each and every one of them. Now the question I want to ask you guys today is, do you have compassion on the people that you study the Bible with? You see, Jesus saw these people for who they really were, which were sheep without shepherds. You see, we need to understand that the world is harassed and helpless and it needs a savior. Right. And it's our job to show the savior to those people. You see, we, we need to look at these people, not in a worldly way, but in a spiritual way. What do I mean by this? Don't look at the physical appearance. Don't look at the beautiful, how they, how they are beautiful or how handsome they are. 
or how wealthy they are or the things that they have. Right. But look at the spiritual side. Right. See, some people have many ailments underneath the positive exterior that people will check. What do I mean by this? Some people have many problems that they hide between the face or the little smile that they have, which is a mask. No problems like depression, problems like loneliness. I know that these are the most common factors or that leads to suicide. I know a few of my friends, they went through the situation and they ended up committing suicide. But the thing is, you never see it. So you gotta go out and ask it. See, some people's problems are the broken marriages and the broken family relationships. I think that is a common thing here in Samoa where the broken marriages, and the only reason why it is a broken marriage is because it's based on the wrong foundation. Right. It's based on worldly foundations rather on Jesus as the strongest foundation. Right. You see, abuse and deep hurt. You see, I think that's one of the things here in Samoa as well. Is women get abused. By their house, by their husbands. I mean, kids get abused as well. And I know that it's getting better now, but it still doesn't make it an excuse. No crushing dick. That is one of the problems. The biggest problems here in Samoa is that we go and do loans. I mean, I'm speaking from uh, my family's experience is that my family love getting loans. It was good at the time, but when giving back to um, to the bank, it just wasn't working. It was just a bit hard to give back. So I feel like that is one of the problems that is here in Samoa is that we loan and then we find that little happiness. And then when it's time to give back, we struggle. See, um, sus substance abuse, like alcoholism, drugs, pornography, addictions, I feel like um, alcohol and drugs was my problems when I was a, a young young kid or let's say a teenager. Some problems like anxiety, worries, and anger. I mean, people hide their true emotions behind these things. And instead of expressing their true emotions and talking things out, they'd rather be angry and feel um, anxieties and worries and keep it to themselves. See, hatred, bitterness, and confusion. You see, Samoans are better people. We don't like to express how we feel. We don't like to talk things out. How do I know this? Because I'm that guy. You see, Jesus is looking for workers to bring in the harvest. You see, workers to help save the lost. Workers to help save this damaging and hurting world. No, ask yourself, are you that worker? Are you ready to work hard for God? You see, it is so inspiring to see and be one of those people that has been saved from all these problems. So you think about it now. When I was in school, I had a thought, going through my whole my high school years, I had a thought, I had a goal. Sorry, I had a goal of making it as a rugby league player. And I was set on that goal and I was going after it. And I was on the right road for it as well. But then as the, I was as I was closing to the end of the years, the end of my high school years, I started going into alcohol. I started drinking. I started um, being very pressured into doing drugs. And the thing with that is it messed me up that next year. I mean, my high school, um, my high school work started dropping. I started losing, uh, I don't know, I was just lost. But that's the thing about it. When you're drinking and when you do um, drugs, it ruins you. And it doesn't show you now, but it shows in the later process. Yeah. See, I started feeling depressed and lonely. I mean, even worse, I came to Samoa and never, and never went back. I started, even, I started to feel more lonely than that. 
And the only way to numb things out for me was to go back to the reason why I got into it, was drinking um, drugs. But I am thankful to God that I am saved for humbling me and I am saved and I found his kingdom. But it has changed me. I mean, sorry, Barrett, but I forgot to ask you. But I mean, even think about Barrett. Um, even uh, the story that um, Scotty told, it was like, she was this girl that's always like this, she always angry. You will not think that this is that bird. Yeah. I mean, even think of Snake's story, yeah. getting abused by her family. Yeah. But you see, Jesus or God blessed her with that, with her sister in the kingdom. Yeah. You see, everyone in this room, every member of the kingdom had their own problems. Some even more than others. And God has saved us through it all. Yeah. One of two, believe as Jesus believed. Come on, believe as Jesus believed. You turn the Bible to Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. Say amen when you're there. Yeah. It says, they went across the lake to the region of Gennesaret. When Jesus got out of the boats, one man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with chains. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the iron on his feet. No one was, as strong, was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry. He would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from the distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want from me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus said to him, For Jesus has said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send him out of the area. You see, right here, we see a man that came up to Jesus with a serious load of problems. But you see, Jesus did not focus on those problems. You see, Jesus saw this man for who he could be, not just for who he is. And the result of that, this man changed in amazing ways. I don't know if Monica and Doug has felt this when they met me, but to me, because of how persistent they were in making me a disciple, I had my hopes up for who I could be, which is a disciple. You see, in that same way, when we view someone, in that same way, when we view someone for who they could be, and not just for who they are, it changes everything. You see, it changes the way you approach that person. It changes the way or how much you value that person. It changes the effort that you give in to that person. And they sense it. But it's all about seeing them for who they could be. You turn the Bible to Mark chapter 5, verse 15. Verse 15. It says, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. You see, anyone, and I mean anyone, can change. You see, we just need to have the vision for people that they, we just need to have the vision for people that we meet. See, have a vision for your friends, have a vision for your families, even the people that you work with. Plan out something for them. Plan out how you want to save them and give your heart. You see, we got to believe that they can all change just as how you change. You see, you got to pursue them to study the Bible and change. You got to remember how much you've changed as well. You see, when people become Christian, they find the motivation and the power to forgive, to love, and be courageous. I feel like I've gotten better than most of those. I've grown as a disciple in all these areas. 
I wasn't that person that would stand in front of people and be crazy. I would always be that person that sits in the back and mind my own business because I was afraid. You see, when becoming a Christian, people find the motivation and power to give up smoking, give up drugs, give up bad relationships. You know, the careers, the homes, and the money. As we are disciples, as we are called disciples, we are called to leave everything behind. You see, all of this, yet this only happens after they understand the love of God. You see, we need to teach the love of God through the cross and then expect them to change. If they don't change, then there's either two things. They are not open, they don't understand, or they are not open or they don't understand, sorry. See, I appreciate my man Henry. Getting baptized today. We've been studying the Bible for quite some time now. And since I'm studying the cross of him this past few days, they have actually got onto it. They actually got onto that and say, Wow, this is what Jesus went through for me. I need to make this change. And he was baptized today. But that is the power of the cross, it changes people. It's in the Bible to Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. It says, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one dies for all, and therefore all die. And he died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. But the question you got to ask yourself, I want you guys to think deeply about is, do you believe in the God, in, do you believe in the power of God that can change people? One of three, love as Jesus love. So I was to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, verse 32 to 43. Verse 32 to 43. It says, <clears throat> two other men, both criminals, were also led out with them to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him. They crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on the other on his on his left. Jesus said, "Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing." And they divided, and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, "He saved others. Let him, let him save himself. If he is God, if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one." The soldier, the soldiers also came up and mocked them. They offered him wine vinegar and said, "If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself." There was a written notice above them, which read, "Which read, this is the king of the Jews." One of the criminals hung there. Girl insults at him, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. You see, right here, we see that Jesus was crucified and he went through all that unimaginable pain. Yet he was thinking of saving one more soul. He was thinking of saving one more lost soul before he died. You see, Jesus never focused on his problems and on his pains and on the pain that he was going through. I mean, he could have easily came down on that cross and say, no, enough is enough. Yeah. Let's destroy this world. But no, that's not what Jesus did. Through all he through it all, he chose to love one last time. He chose to save one last soul. You see, is there ever a good enough reason to not help someone who is lost? The answer is no, there's not. Because there weren't any good enough reason for you to be saved as well. But Jesus still saved us. Anyway. Yeah. 
See, so often we put our own perceived problems in perspective when we love others. Then our problems will seem small and God will take care of them. See, you will always find people who are more in debt, who are more in worse relationships, who are more sad, who are more depressed, who have faced more tougher situation than you have. And we need to take the solution to them and, mo and model the examples for them in, these er in all these areas. You see, to simply put it, we are all here because of Jesus' love and each and every one of us are saved because of Jesus Christ. You see, in conclusion, the title of our lesson is Loving the Lost. Point number one is see how Jesus see. Point number two, believe as Jesus believed. And point number three is love as Jesus love. See, one practical I want to challenge everyone on is get to know the people that you share, that you share to, and even the people that you study in the Bible. Yeah. I challenge you to build a close relationship because that is what Jesus wants. And with that, to God be a <laughs>